Bill Mitchell. I'm here with Jesse. Hello. We are the Minimalist Garden. We're here at the Minimalist Garden Laboratory where we uh, do some experimenting and try and figure out what is the best way to use our minimalist method to uh, apply to the plants and the environment. We like to keep the stuff kind of uh, natural uh, to create habitat is our primary concern here is to get the animals to come down. That's a cardinal. We call it the Teresa bird. You know why? Teresa, Teresa. One of the purposes of the minimalist garden is to attract the wildlife back to urban spaces. So that's the purpose for all of this, for leaving this, uh, this greenery, letting the grass grow. You can see we do, we do manicure it, but we don't overdo it. Um, most uh, urban landscapes are way overdone, in our opinion. Now, we know also that, uh, that, that this is a method or a technique that requires a, a change a paradigm shift in how people think about this. We haven't had any problems, but uh, but we're always on pins and needles anticipating that the HOA is going to come and say your grass is too long, or or it's too uh, or it, it's too shabby, or something. Yeah. This is our tree treatment around the post uh, around our post box. We had a tri we had a, a nice sign here showing that this was a bayscape, but the the HOA made us take it down because they said even though it was a small, really nice little sign, they came and said you can't have any signs in front of your house. So we took it out. Um, you know we want, we don't want to fight that battle now. We redid the rain barrel and uh, painted it there again. The HOA came and said uh, the rain barrel needs to be meet certain criteria. So I haven't had it approved yet, um, but the way we had it was more natural wood. And uh, so I took it and I matched the siding the, with, uh, I went over to Home Depot with a piece of the siding and they matched the color. So the, this, so then we painted it the same color as the side. This little corner, one of our favorites, Remember noise pollution? Every day I hear those grinders grinding up the trees. Our theory is that uh, as long as we define certain areas, then should we have a problem with the HOA, we're going to tell them that you know this is a plant bed. And say, well, the grass is too long. And I say, well, grass, grass is a plant. It's a decorative plant, and that's how we want it. You know, we know for sure that the county program is 18 inches. So the, the county says that lawn grass cannot be longer than 18 inches. So we make sure with our scythe and with our clipper, we come through. We make sure that it's never more than that. This is where we put uh, the, the leaves, the sticks. A lot, a lot of stuff like that. We, we pile it up, but we don't, uh, but this is loose enough that the moisture gets down through there. It's not the same as putting uh, mulch on a tree. Over here, we've got some shrubs that we put in. You can see, here's the theory, and, and these are uh, coneflower. This is coneflower. This is a, uh, 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 what is it, a uh, bayberry. I think it's a, it's a bayberry or a winterberry bush. And we put several of these in. So you can see there's more cone flower back in here. We like, we have them surrounded with the grass. Um, you know, a lot of people, and people have come and say, well, why don't you take all the grass out and just put mulch there? But, but our theory here in the Minimalist Garden is that, uh, first of all, it's a garden, so we want plants to live here. Second of all, I think that the grass is, is a living uh, uh, surround we surround our plants with living matter, and uh, and the grass is fine. It seems to like being here, so uh, and it doesn't really interfere. It's uh, oddly enough, we surround them with grass because the grazers, the the deer like these, and they will eat them all the way to the nubs, 
if you don't uh, if you don't surround them with this kind of thing, you know, now deer are browsers. So they come around, they got their nose down, they're browsing around, they say, well, they don't eat grass, you know, so they so they they see this grass and say, oh, there's nothing there. So they go and they just leave that alone because they don't ever, never even come across it. Now over here, they did come across it because there isn't enough grass that surrounds this and they ate these down. And I think they'll probably come back and eat them again, but you can see how they're all chewed off on the ends. So I'm, we're hoping this will come back, but, uh, then, but if it feeds the deer, it feeds the deer. You can see how the grass receives itself here. Now we do have to come, we've scheduled, we're gonna bring somebody over. We got, we got to get this periwinkle under control again. It's, uh, it's kind of a, it's an invasive plant. Um, it's, it's pretty and it's a nice plant and it's a ground, but it takes over and it's not native. So it doesn't provide food for wildlife or anything. You know? It would be ideal if it, was, if it was native and it was something that the deer would graze on. That would be wonderful, but that's not the case. The deer don't want to have anything to do with it. So that's a problem. And we have to come in and pull it out by hand because we don't use any poison in the middle of the So we'll come over, clear an area like this, and in, in an hour or two, uh, one person working diligently can, uh, can clear a lot of that out. It is a rhizome, so it's, it's almost impossible to eradicate without poison. But you can control it. And, and our, uh, our strategy in the Minimalist Garden is to, is to pull it up, weaken it, and then put a plant in there that will, uh, that will control it, will take it over, and not allow it to get as strong. Now we had that, we had, we had luck with this grass. This is our Haramuli grass. And it is all up to in here, but uh, but we're gonna have to pull periwinkle out. Man. So anyway, so this whole area has come in. This is one we've been nurturing. These are all volunteer native kind of plants um, that were here when we moved in. We just nurtured them. We haven't really put anything in here, but uh, we've got these, these nice grasses and nice uh, variety of green things. We like the the diversity. These are Jack in the Pulpit. We've got quite a, those, a lot of those came in this year, and I'm really uh, pleased with that. You can see there's one here, here, up in there. Just a lot of those came in for some reason. I haven't seen as many in a long time. You can see how we use the branches to delineate the space. This is minimalist technique. I saw this technique used over at the uh, Washington Arboretum. So I was very proud that, uh, you know, that our technique is something that is uh, acceptable in, in, in uh, horticultural uh, We've got an interesting story. My granddaughter came here one day and, just, and looked at this clover and reached right down and picked up a four-leaf clover. Nice. So I dried it out, I put it in a card for her birthday, and I sent it to her. I said, you know, this is very rare that you should get something for somebody to find. These are very hard to find, and they and they signify that you're going to have a good life. So it was a nice birthday present.